Pickpocket has been the most influential film in uh, my creative life. I saw it in 1969. I was a critic for the Alley Free Press. It had just been released for the first time in Los Angeles. It, had been, it was made in 59, uh, came out in 69. I wrote about it uh, for uh, two weeks running because I really couldn't think of uh, anything else I wanted to write about. I, I realized that you could make a film about a man in his room and his room. You could make a film about a soul, a soul in transit. The, the character of Michel in Pickpocket, it's almost an idea. You know, it's Dostoevskian. He is the criminal, the capital C, the ideological criminal. There's another agenda running, and it's not the agenda of a crime movie, and it's not even the agenda of a dialectical movie, you know, a movie about uh, uh, morality. There's another agenda working, which is this agenda of a soul that can't find a place. And when I came to write a script myself, I made such a character. Now, the taxi driver is not a transcendental character. Taxi driver is not a transcendental film. But the urge, this type of loner, this soul floating around in ether, uneasy, the, the impetus for that idea did come from pickpocket. Uh, Scorsese's film, stylistically, is certainly closer to film noir or Godard than it is to um, uh, Bresson. Uh, it's said that uh, Bresson first had the idea from Pickpocket from watching Samuel Fuller's Pick Up on South Street, where Richard Widmark plays a petty thief, and, uh, which was a film noir. And of course, uh, two more disparate approaches could not uh, be imagined, because you know Fuller just reaches through the screen and grabs you by the throat and tries to throw you around the room and manipulate you in any way he possibly can. You know, he's sort of the kind of cigar-chomping bully boy, sensationalist director. Uh, Bresson taking the same subject matter takes the opposite approach, which is says, I, I'm going to recede from you ever so slowly until finally you start coming toward me. Robert Bresson is one of the most uh, perverse directors in the whole world. Uh, perverse uh, may seem a strange choice of words uh, for someone who is generally considered to be one of the most austere and uh, ascetic and spiritual directors. One usually associates the word perverse with corruption or decay. But I use it in this context to illustrate how Bresson uses the film medium against itself. Film is not a very spiritual medium. And if you want to convey transcendence or quietude, the film is really not for you. Because uh, film is filmed reality, it, it's, it's images, and it's images moving in real time. So therefore, what it's good at is empathy, evoking emotions, and of course, movement, so that um, psychological realism is the film medium's strong suit, and, and action uh, is, is the high card. Acting is, you know, the royal road from the filmmaker to the viewer. That's how we empathize, we identify with the performer. So Bresson uses non-actors. Uh, and he only uses them once. He never repeats them in another film. He uses non-actors who non-act, who basically just say their lines. So he's denying you what you want most from acting. It's a kind of blank, frontal, iconic look that 
you know, one associates more with uh, Byzantine iconography than with uh, film emotions. Is it triste? When you deprive an actor or an actress of those tools of empathy, keep them from smiling or uh, doing those little actor things that make you identify. Uh, that, again, contributes to the sense of unease, and it also sends a message that I'm up to um, something else here. This is not the kind of performances you see in a movie. This isn't uh, bad acting for bad acting's sake. He doesn't use close-ups. You know, when you're shooting this shot here, I don't know if the camera's wide enough, but this shot here is generally called a single, and this shot here is called a close-up. So his single is really almost very close to what you would call a full shot. So there, there are no close-ups. And a close-up is perhaps the most powerful, empathetic tool a filmmaker has. He just doesn't, doesn't use it. Music, for the most part, uh, uh, music sort of runs alongside a movie like a mirror, telling you how you're supposed to feel. Happy, frightened, sad, anxious, tearful. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a real, for most filmmakers, it's a real lazy man's uh, tool, because you, you can make people scared without actually doing it visually. Bresson chooses not to use it, or use it in very peculiar ways. Most of Pickpocket is silent. And then, unexpectedly, without warning, there'll be a burst of music. And sometimes this music will come in an appropriate passage. And sometimes it will come unexpectedly like in a montage of training to be a pickpocket. And then he'll have another montage later the same type of montage, and this time without music. So, again, he's setting you up uh, not to be manipulated in the way you think you're going to be. Plot, narrative. Again, you know, this is storytelling itself. Pickpocket, it goes along and it has a narrative, a kind of quotidian, of does this, he does that. But... The high points of the narrative are gone. Uh, right in the first uh, 15 minutes, you see him out at uh, Longchamp, the uh, racetrack, and uh, he says, I thought I was mastering the world. One minute later, I was caught. They don't show him being caught. He's walking, and next thing you see, he's sitting in a police car. You have a film about a criminal and a police detective, and you don't show the scene where he's caught. You know, in screenwriting, that's sort of called a sin affair, means a necessary scene. Well, he doesn't show the necessary scene. The mother's death, not shown. To um, play with your expectations of narrative, Brayson also uses doubling, which is repeating information. So the very opening shot of the film is a shot of a journal and a man writing in a journal, and you can read what he's writing, and then he says what he's writing. So you're getting the information twice, one right on top of each other. Uh, later on in the film, he actually triples it. So you see him in the journal saying, I went into the hall uh, of a large bank. He says that on the soundtrack, I went into the hall of a large bank. And then you can see him go into the hall of a large bank and sit down. Well, this is contrary to everything you have been trained to think of as uh, normal film language. And again, this applies to editing or the pacing of a film. Since, as I mentioned before, film takes place in real time, uh, editing is very crucial. Normally, when you edit a film, if someone enters or leaves a room, you drop the splice anywhere from eight to 10 frames before the action is finished or after it has begun. So you take the character till 
he's almost out of the room and you cut. Or you take the door till it almost closes, you cut, and the next time you cut just as the door has begun to open. And that gives the film pace. Over and over again in Pickpocket, you will see uh, Brayson put that eight to 10 frames on the other side. You cut to a door. One, two, the door opens. Well, this is not how you edit a film. You know, This is not how we are trained to watch film. He is disrupting our expectations. He's making us uncomfortable. So the question arises, what is Brayson up to? He's, he's clearly up to something here by all this twisting and perversion of film technique. You take a film-friendly premise, a criminal, a cop, and a girl. Now that's classic film stuff. But then you start not doing what you're supposed to or doing it in a different way. What effect does this have on the viewer? Well, it creates a sense of unease, uh, a sense of anxiety, a sense of disparity. Something is not quite right. This isn't how you do a, a crime movie. The pacing is wrong. The performances are wrong. Yet it's fascinating. Well, this makes you sort of uneasy as a viewer. And then, in one kind of revealing moment, he opens the gate. In the case of Pickpocket, the final scene, when there's a burst of emotion uh, in a movie without emotion. Uh, the, uh, he says, Michelle says, a sweet light came, comes up, and the famous last line, oh, Jean, oh, Jean, uh, what a long road I've taken to come to you. The camera moves in for the only close shot in the movie. The music comes up in sync with the emotion for the very first time, and you get all of a sudden this emotion. Uh, what Bresson is trying to make you do is to try to make you jump. Make you jump from this odd, uneasy place to this other place. And um, if you make that jump, uh, he has created uh, something almost unique in film, is, is, is uh, the movement uh, of a soul, not only the soul on screen, but the, the soul watching it. He's asking you to make that leap, the leap from uh, the, the mundane, the quotidian to the transcendent. Oh, Jeanne, pour aller jusqu'à toi, quel drôle de chemin il m'a fallu prendre. 